Hey, this is James from All Hair on Thermal Combustion. And this is our crappy 302 that we're going to be putting into our 84 F-150 extended cab. This is a 90s roller block. So we got that going for it. I did want to do a roller cam in this engine. And uh, we started doing a little prep work on the block. It's getting ready to go outside and get pressure washed and the oven cleaner treatment. But we've already gone around and took off a lot of the sharp edges. Because we are going to be working on this motor. And it really sucks to uh, cut yourself to shreds when you're messing around with a motor that you just rebuilt. Because you left all the sharp casting flash and everything else on it. Uh, I know this from experience. You guys probably do too. But well, we went around, took care of all of our sharp edges. We're not going to completely go over this entire block and do everything. But still need to take that down a little bit because that's kind of sharp. Got one on the other side too. But we've got all of our freeze plugs out. Core plugs, whatever you want to call them. Got all of our plugs out for the oil galleys. Took out our coolant plugs down on the bottom side. They go below the cylinders. And the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to break out the uh, thread chasing taps. And go over this entire thing and clean the threads before I put the oven cleaner on it. And then I'm going to let it sit out in the sun for a couple hours and get some heat into it. Before I actually go to clean it. But right now. On to thread chasing. Here's some of the stuff you're going to need. When you start doing your uh, thread chasing. The cylinder head bolt holes. On a small block Ford. 302, 351, 289. I think the 260's are the same way. Your bell housing bolts. And your head bolts. Are 7 16 14 coarse thread. Got a tap for that. Don't have a tap handle, got baby vice grips, whatever. Next thing you want to do is you want to know where your bolt holes are actually going to. Usually take a thin screwdriver. I see all my ones at the top. They all bottom out. So that means they're all blind holes. They get dirt that accumulates down in the bottom. So that's why the compressed air is here. These ones on the bottom go down into the water jackets. And I'm sticking my finger down here where the uh, freeze plug would be. And I'm touching my finger with the screwdriver. So these all go into water passages. Which means there's most likely going to be excess corrosion on those. For these blind holes up the top, take some compressed air. I already did these three, but blow them out to get the debris out of the bottom. That way your tap is not going in and just crunching a bunch of crap. I start my taps by hand. You feel better that way. And now I see it's going in. It's going in good. So I'll take my booby vice grips and go ahead and wind this in. Now I'm starting to get resistance. So you want to back your tap up. Go in a little bit more. Getting resistance. Back it up. Basically you're cleaning out your threads by going forwards and backwards. Come up on that because it's getting a little crunchy. Come back up. That's where it stops. That's the bottom of the hole. So I'm going to bring this all the way back out. Undo those. Take it out by hand. And we can look at the bottom of the tap here it's got a bunch of rust in it no large particles no chunks anything like that so now I want to take this and blow it out again and you saw the puff of rust coming out so that means we went in there we cleaned those threads out good and before I run this tap down the next hole clean the tap up so it's 
all nice and clean. No need to put one hole's garbage down another hole. And you keep going around and doing the same thing. I'm going to do all the head bolt holes with the 7 16 tap, 7 16 14 tap. I'm not going to mess with the bell housing bolts right now because it's up on a stand. When I take this off of the stand before we put it in the car, we'll go ahead and clean all those out because this surface isn't going to get painted. <clears throat> so this will be a nice clean surface. We can clean that out, run the tap in there. Those will all be good to go. And then I'm going to switch to other tap sizes to do other parts of the engine. So there's a little thing about chasing your threads. Now another low buck thing I'm going to do is I want to pull these uh, guide pins out for the heads. Um, you can get pullers that will do this and all that stuff. But if you ain't got pullers, all you really need is a set of needle nose vice grips. There is a slit up this dowel pin. If you put needle nose vice grips on there and you wiggle it gently and move around... You can actually get these to come out. I'm using this part of the vice grip as a pivot and it's already starting to pull out. So get these out of the way. That way when you resurface, refinish your deck surface here, I'm going to use a 3M roll lock wheel on it, but I don't have anything in the way. I could take these and clean these up real good and get them ready to get put back in later. All right, so now I'm chasing the holes at the front of the block for the timing cover and water pump assembly. And uh, these two holes right here, and these two holes right here, these bolts are notorious for getting stuck inside the water pump and the timing cover and snapping off on the Ford Small Blocks, the Windsor series. Um, usually what happens is a lot of people seem to think that these holes go into the coolant passage, but they don't. They're all blind holes, so you're not getting your coolant leaks from in there. You're actually getting your cooling leaks from your timing cover not being perfect. It'll leak around the gasket surface into the threads and into the bolts, and that's what causes them to seize up and usually snap off, and things can get pretty ugly after that. So you don't need to pack, you don't need to put thread sealing on your bolts here. You do need to make sure that you take your timing cover and clean out where these bolts go on the inside. I usually take a drill bit, go through there and clean all the chalky mess out of it. Then when I'm putting this assembly back together, I'll coat those bolts in anti-seize. And 90% of the time that takes care of the problem unless the timing cover is really, really warped. And that is prone to happen on these things. So you need to check the flatness of your timing cover too before you redo your motor. Or even when you're putting a timing chain in it, you need to check that. Because as you can see down in here, if you lose any kind of strength here for the gasket to seat up, you can actually weep water into your crankcase and into your oil pan. I've seen that happen before on these things. And sometimes it's better to just get that uh, new timing cover for like 40 bucks. Another problem I found on this one is I was going in here and checking... And inside of this hole feels really spongy. Sorry about being so close up there. But most likely what happened was somebody did a water pump on this thing at some point in its life. And decided, hey, let me put a buttload of RTV on there and then run the bolt in. Because obviously that bolt hole goes to the water passages. We just found out, no, it doesn't. But what can happen there is in areas like this. You go to run, you put a bunch of RTV on the bolt, you go to run in there, run it in there. It builds up pressure and it kind of hydrostatically, it can either push the threads out or on these motors, I've seen this piece missing where it just broke off because they had too much liquid in there. It's kind of how you press out a pilot bearing. You put liquid material in there, hit it with a chisel or a punch and that'll drive the bearing out by hydraulic pressure. You can do the same thing to your threads. Which is why I'm going through and cleaning all these threads out. This side is nice and clean. I'm scratching against cast iron. 
but this one is the one we just pulled the big glob out of so i'm going to keep chasing threads and got a couple more locator sleeves to pull and keep going with this okay i went through and did the mains <clears throat> on this block they're also 7 16 14 coarse thread just like the bell housing and the cylinder heads the motor mounts are the same 7 16 14 coarse on this side i ran into a bit of a problem that's one of our motor mount holes and the thread the uh, tap one in there really good but over on this side i found out that most of the hole is completely stripped out so that's going to have to get fixed and get a Gila coil. I mean, there's threads way in there, but they're not good threads. And I'm probably going to go a little bit deeper with that one just to clean it up a little bit better, but definitely got a problem there. And you want to make sure your mains are clean because if you got a bunch of grit and dirt and everything else in there, engine's not going to be happy and you're also going to have problems with your torque readings where it could read too low it could read too high so those are all cleaned out and ready to go under the oil pan all right so i got all the bolt holes tapped and cleaned out found that problem one this thing's been sitting out in the sun for about two hours to get some heat into it and now I've given it a healthy coat of Easy Off Oven Cleaner. A lot of people say you can use the cheap crap and it does just as good. But where I bought this at, I think the cheap crap was $4.50 and Easy Off was $5. So I just went ahead and got the Easy Off. But uh, got a nice coat on there. And if you can see, it's already starting to break the oil deposits down. So I've got that sprayed underneath all the webbing where the crankshaft goes up in the bottom part of the lifter galley. All in the timing area. I'm going to let this stuff bake on here for probably about 15 minutes. And start to rinse it off and see what this thing looks like. And another thing about Easy Off, if you guys are using this to uh, degree stuff, don't breathe it in. It has lye in it. And uh... Some of the other brands used to have caustic soda in there, which is a form of acid. And if you breathe that in, that can mess your breathing up for quite a few days. So uh, just don't breathe it in. You also have to watch putting this stuff on aluminum parts. If you like shiny aluminum, you might want to find some other way to clean it. Because Easy Off will usually turn aluminum into a dullish gray color. So, if you're looking for a pretty aluminum, glass bead it or do something else, don't use the Easy Off. I've seen this stuff turn decent looking transmissions into gray things. So, there's a little tip on Easy Off. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. So, I'm going to go ahead and fire up the pressure washer and get this oven cleaner off of here. I'm going to be wearing safety glasses because getting lie in your eye. Ain't no fun. Been there, done that. And uh, when I first hit this block with the water, I'm not going to be going full blast on it. I want the new the water to kind of neutralize the lye a little bit. That way, if it does get on me, I'm not getting all burned up about it. So get this thing fired up and get this cleaned off, and we'll see what it looks like. Of course, I'll time lapse this a little quicker so you can listen to some happy music while I get all covered in munch.
look at it. The Easy Off worked really, really good. This just had that oily film of everything on it. And as you can see, that's pretty much down to bare cast again. Same thing in the crank area. That's all cleaned up. Flip this over. Lifter Valley. Sorry, too close. Lifter Valley is looking good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the air hose out. Blow this all down. And there's a few spots where the grease was a little bit more stubborn. So I'm going to go ahead and coat this thing again. Okay, so I brought the black block back in the shop and blew it all down with compressed air. Still got a few little spots to hit that got some moisture, but got it nice and dry. And that's what the oven cleaner did. It took all the black film off of it and left it pretty much as cast. Same thing in the lifter valley. I mean, you can see I got some little spots over there where the oil's kind of stuck, but that's really not super critical. I'll hit them with a wire brush. But it did clean everything up really, really nice. Didn't take all the rust out of the cylinders. I wasn't expecting it to, but it did take some down because they all had a nice layer of orange on them. But uh, that's where we're going to stop for this one. So basically this was prepping and cleaning the block. And this thing was already power washed before I did the easy off treatment to it. So it's already had the major gook taken off of it. And when I pressure washed it, I made sure I went down the oil galley passages and hit every hole I could. I flushed out the water passages all the way down the block. Water was coming out nice and clean. So that's a good thing. But next time we'll be prepping gasket surfaces. I got to fix the thread that's bad on the motor mount. And I'll probably just go over this entire engine with a wire brush to clean any loose stuff off of it and get the rest of the little parts of oil out of it and then it will be ready to be treated with uh fogging oil and put in a bag while we get parts together so that's going to be it for this one like and subscribe please and this has been james from all hell internal combustion on the 302 build have a good one